Hi, I'm Daniel Zengel with PRP Labs, joined once again with Don Lipscomb. And uh, we're going to be talking about the best centrifuges or centrifuge techniques for preparing platelet-rich plasma. So first of all, I just want to mention in the industry, every manufacturer of a PRP kit is typically going to have their own special centrifuge to fit their particular kit. So you really don't have a lot of say over what kind of centrifuge you're going to end up using. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really up to you to just pick the manufacturer that you like uh, and you're going to be stuck with their centrifuge and their PRP kits. So with that being said, uh, Don, can you tell us a bit about sort of the best practices for centrifuging PRP? Sure. Um, so just a little background on centrifuges. So they harness um, basically a sedimentation process. So if you've ever like left a, a, a water bottle out in the sand and then it got some sand in it and brought it home, set it down on the counter, then you come back and you notice that there's like a layer of sand at the bottom. Right. So this is caused because, you know, there's higher density in those particles. And so given enough time, like if you had, um, for instance, a vial of blood, right. you just left it out on the desk, it would actually sediment out into three different layers right. because of um, the overall density of the different cells. However, we want to kind of speed this process up. Right. Because we need the patient <laughs> in and out of there. And exactly. we don't want the blood to spoil. Exactly. Right. Yeah. In essence, yeah. So particles of higher density or larger size travel at a faster rate in these centrifuges when they're, um, so centrifugation basically harnesses uh, the principle of centrifugal force to mm -hmm. sediment these out. And uh, so higher density or larger size will travel at, travel at a faster rate um, and at some point become separated out basically from the particles that are less dense or smaller. Um, so the particles in suspension um, experience a radial centrifugal force, uh, and this moves them actually literally away from the axis of rotation. Okay. So it's kind of like if you're in a car and you make a turn, you feel kind of pushed to the side. Right. It's, it, this is the same force. Right. Um, so th this is also important whenever you're expressing it in units. So um, relative centrifugal force is an expression of g-force, which is basically the Earth's gra gravitational force. Okay. It's basically like taking the Earth's gravity and multiplying it, just using rotation. Right. Um, so, so whenever you're calculating this for use in, in science, um, you need to remember that the g-force acting on the particles is exponential to the speed of the rotation. Um, and this is expressed as revolutions per minute. Um, this exponential is important when considering uh, your speed because if you double your speed, you're actually in in the force. You're actually going to end up uh, quadrupling it. Right. Okay. Uh, quadrupling the amount of force applied Got given it. double speed. Got it. Okay. So so if if preparation time was two minutes at a thousand RPM. Mm -hmm. uh, four minutes at 500 RPM would not get you the same results. No, no, exactly. So it needs to be recalculated every time. And also centrifugal force um, increases with the distance of the axis of rotation. So basically um, a larger centrifuge, uh, given, given the same rotational speed, will exert a larger force, Right. basically. So this makes sense yeah. why the manufacturers have their own centrifuges, because exactly. all these kits are different lengths, widths, weights and uh those all make a difference right so they've already figured out the protocols for preparation with mo with all these kits you're going to see basically they'll say you spin it for this long at this many mm -hmm. rpms you use exactly this much blood exactly this much anticoagulant because they've already done the testing to figure out what works exactly and um so the most important factors to consider in are you know time uh speed and Temperature. 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 That's something so, I don't hear mentioned very often with PRP preparation. Interestingly, I haven't read much about this, and I've always wondered about this because I know in every biology lab, molecular biophysics lab, anything I've worked at, anything biological that we were handling, we would actually cool down the centrifuges. Maybe not that much, mm -hmm. but we would cool them down because high speeds create friction 
and can heat the sample during centrifugation, especially if it's not in a vacuum, this creates drag. Mm -hmm. So the air is literally getting heated up and we're dealing with small volumes, so it could get heated pretty quickly. Right. Um, and, so, and what, how would that affect the PRP if it was heated up during centrifugation? Well, for one, it might um, cause the platelets to activate early, okay. basically. And even if it didn't get heated, maybe just the time allotment could, uh, even, even just cooling down the sample can actually make bio biological processes slow down. Right. So in, in terms of biological time scales, uh, things at, uh, you know, our normal homeostatic temperature, right. everything's operating at maximum efficiency, right. basically. So if you cool it down, it's literally like it, like being, I don't know, in a viscous fluid that you can't move around right, very right. fast. It's so going to slow everything down in terms of the cellular action and the, exactly. and the platelets Exactly, metabolism, activating. everything like that is going to get um, slowed down. So one study I read actually recommended that these centrifuges be cooled to between 12 and 16 degrees Celsius, okay. which it's like 50, 50 to 60, 60. degrees. Exactly. Um, and the thought behind that is one, you don't want heating because of friction, which right. could actually damage the platelets and lower their viability. Right. And two, you also don't want them to become activated during the process. Right. So these are all things that should be considered. Yeah, and that's interesting that you, you know, in your experience and all the labs you've been in when you're processing living tissue samples, you always make sure that the centrifuge is at a certain temperature. Meanwhile, in the industry, with, with all these different PRP kit manufacturers, I have not heard of a centrifuge that actually keeps the PRP at a certain temperature. I think this is a factor that's largely overlooked in the industry. And I, I think some more research should be done into it because some of these studies that are contradictory, it could just be in the PRP prep and any one of these steps along the right. way. I mean, it's a very, uh, biology is very finicky. I've learned that. And any single little misstep could easily be the reason why you have a low platelet count or your platelets weren't viable. So you right. might have had a high platelet count, but a low growth factor count. Right, right. Okay, so I guess we're making a request to all the researchers and uh, platelet-rich plasma kit manufacturers to uh, spend maybe some time and energy looking into how temperature affects PRP preparation. Mm -hmm. And does it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, Don, well, thank you for talking with me about centrifuges. We have some more information about PRP preparation coming right up, so stay tuned.